We want to give you a sense of the mission of Writer's House and our vision for where this work is going. And we want you to know this because as you move into overseeing the administration of this great university, you should be aware of the transformative influence that work out of this project is already having nationally on the debate about the function of the humanities in the 21st century. One of our tags is make your life a work of art. Again, we were inspired by this partly by Tom Russell's vision. With his gift, we were able to renovate 40% of the basement here. You've seen the seminar rooms here and the project expanded as we, we worked on it. With this success, we have now find it necessary to move to the second stage of this project, which is to build spaces that are open 24 hours a day where students can do this kind of writing. So the next phase, one of the ways we've imagined it is, is that it comes out through the collaboratory here and allows us to, to build these 24-hour multimedia composing studios. You can see these are some of the visions that have inspired us. But we want a space large enough so that four or five students could perform together, do dramatic performances, but also music, and then smaller spaces where students can work independently. We imagine a space where the technology, just like here, another aspect of the complications in composing this way is you have to check out and keep track of a great deal of equipment. So we need a space for that kind of work to take place. This is, however, as you'll see at the end of the presentation, really just a middle step in a larger process. Our commitment is to understanding that this mode of composition has transformed the way work is done globally and that this kind of training transcends an English department per se and is the kind of work that students who are working in the sciences and social sciences need to be trained in as well. There are a number of projects that have emerged out of Writer's House as we've gone forward, but as we talk about making your life a work of art, one of our commitments here is to creating opportunities. The understanding of creativity as a narrow property that belongs to a few geniuses has never actually been that convincing. But now in the age of technology, it's quite clear that it's possible for all of us to access the creative potential that we're endowed with. Or as we do here, we bring famous, successful writers and creative talents from around the country to come and meet with our students. And we do this in order to make it clear that the power of creative work is in its ability to build community. You're certainly aware that one of the challenges that Rutgers faces, particularly this campus, is that students are here four or five days and then they're home for the weekend. And the sense of whether they feel a sense of belonging here is a challenge. So the success of our Writers at Rutgers program and Writers House involvement of that, I think, was pretty much in evidence. Last week, first week of the semester, we had Juno Diaz here, Rutgers' own Pulitzer Prize winning alumni, and we drew over 900 people to his reading. The other goal that we have is that we're interested in having everyone understand that in this new learning environment, it's necessary to commit yourself to lifelong learning. Five years ago, I didn't know the first thing about how to work with the kind of software that's made this presentation. And now I would say with some confidence that five years from now, first year writing at Rutgers is going to have to involve composition of this kind. Ultimately, though, we're interested in having our students turn out from the idea that creativity is an inward-looking process and have them think instead of creativity is fundamentally about engaging the world and making a difference. Again, this is why we think this isn't something simply for students in English, but that it's for all students who are working at the university. We've seen quite directly the results and unanticipated results of being creative here. Each one of these entities has emerged over the past year out of Writer's House. I would say virtually none of them were originally there in its conception. 
but we've created our own WH tube as an alternative to YouTube. We describe WH tube as the thinking person's YouTube. All of this stuff has emerged and has been a way of creating community here in the department through this project. It is leading towards a larger goal, however. As you know, two years ago, the university began the process of launching the early phases of putting together a billion dollar capital campaign. Through that rigorous prioritizing process, the university and the committee under Phil Fermansky pulled together six showcase proposals at the top of the process, and one of those is the Center for the New Humanities, which emerged out of the thinking that created this space. The Center for the New Humanities, as we imagine it, is on a grand scale. You can see from that picture. We're imagining a space where the humanities is returned to the center of the College Avenue campus and where this space will serve as a hub for fostering interdisciplinary work that is centrally focused with and committed to the principles that I mentioned earlier about creating opportunities and engaging the world. As such, we have to build new buildings for new learning. The effort to try and retrofit buildings from the late 1800s and have them serve purposes in the 21st century is not ideal and we need to build new spaces just as we've done down here that say to the students the work they're doing here is important and valued by the institution. So we imagine a space that will focus on and foster collaboration just like we've built here. So there'll be seminar rooms and conference rooms. The idea here is unlike the spaces that are available to us now, we need to create spaces where it is possible for students to learn together and to learn how to collaborate. The networking technology that we have at our disposal now is designed to foster the power of collaboration, but it doesn't work if people don't know how to collaborate. In order to produce the kind of work that's distinctive in the multimedia, we will of course need to have high-tech multimedia studios and interactive classrooms. Again, that's in order to make it possible for our students to put together idea-driven intellectual work. We imagine the Center for the New Humanities as being a space that's living and active 24 hours a day. So we imagine ground level coffee shops and other retailers that are there. This is a vision that's at the core of this project and the necessity for building spaces that make this kind of thinking possible. For us, and our closing tag that drives us in this project, the future is always in the present in our highly accelerated time. And the time to defer transforming the education for Rutgers undergraduates is here today. And that's what this group of dedicated people who are on this team has managed to pull off in less than a year.